So, everybody got something to drink and something to eat? Good. We are going to continue today's program. And uh, we have now actually come to the next point on the agenda. We will now have the uh, presentation. Milestones. Biggest P2P platforms. Europe and future plans. By the CEO of Mintos, Martin Salter. Welcome to the stage. And a bit of applause, come on. Hi, everybody. Hi, so I'm Martin. I'm from uh, Mintos. Uh, and today I'm really going to touch on about uh, many topics. So I'm going to talk more about the fintech in general. Uh, then I'm going to dwell on uh, what's happening in P2P space in a kind of macro level and then dig deeper on uh, on the Baltics and uh, also talk, of course, about the Mintos and what's coming uh, from us in the near future. And be with us, we are also going to uh, announce our new product as, at the end of the presentation. And I guess we're going to have some time for questions as well, all right? Cool. Anyway, uh, actually, I do like Ronald Reagan a lot. So he used to be, or was one of the best communicators. And uh, one of the quotes what I definitely like is that in general what he says that the growth, there's no really limits to the growth because our uh, uh, kind of limits of the humans uh, are not, not there. So we have uh, immense intelligence, imagination, and also we are wandering around. And I think that's also is happening in the fintech space and actually in general across the world. So what we experience the world today is so much different than it was even like 10 years ago. Of course, it happens like slowly, uh, but uh, if you would look back like 10 years ago, it was very much different world where we were living at. And I actually do like the saying that we uh, overestimate how much is going to change in two years, but we very much underestimate how much is going to change in 10 years' time. So there's going to be a lot of change coming up in the near future. And that also, of course, uh, affects uh, financial technologies and how we uh, think about financial services. Fintech is basically the universe of uh, big numbers. So if you look at the numbers, so it is estimated, and of course, uh, be cautious about all of these numbers, so it's uh, only estimations. Uh, but in uh, 2018 alone, uh, there were about 110 billion uh, US dollars invested in fintech. It's a lot, lot, lot. Uh, and it's growing, so it's been actually up uh, almost double since, more than double since 2017. And 2019 is no, uh, no different. And it's also the universe, uh, it's a universe of big shifts. So there's many things uh, happening. So what we see is that the uh, mobile is obviously, as expected, uh, taking up a, a larger and larger uh, share of uh, us dealing with financial services. Obviously, like who wants to go to the uh, uh, bank uh, branches today? So uh, those numbers are dropping. Branches are closing, and everybody is uh, obviously experiencing those uh, shifts. And we are investing in uh, uh, technologies as any other uh, tech-driven industries. Uh, so artificial intelligence is obviously the one which everyone is very hyped about. And I think it's going to bring uh, great benefits to us as a users, be it us as a users from investor perspective, be it us as a users from borrower perspective, or be it us as a users just as a, of a traditional banking services. So definitely artificial intelligence is going to make our life uh, different. Maybe not that, uh, as I said, maybe we overestimate how much it's going to change in the next two years. But in the next 10 years, it's definitely going to be very, very different uh, world when we think about that. Uh, finance. So what are the effects of those uh, big shifts? Is that we have to adapt and evolve. So uh, there are many actually new industries popping up. Uh, the same reg tech. So uh, more and more companies are talking about the compliance. Uh, actually, if you look at the, all the bank reports, it's the, the increase in the word compliance used in annual reports has been like, uh, like 100 times bigger than it was like in 2005. So everybody speaks about compliance. And the reg tech is obviously there 
uh, to help uh, with compliance and the regulations and uh, use technology also in that space. What else is happening is, of course, what we see is challenger banks or digital banks. There's like plethora of them today, hundreds of them, and mo many of us actually uh, today maybe have only bank account in a digital uh, only bank. Uh, traditional banks, they are not disappearing. They have to adapt. It's not easy for them uh, because uh, of the uh, number of people they have, of the legacy systems they have. Uh, and just the decision making is super slow, but they still do their best. Uh, they are expanding in digital banking and they are obviously are investing in the technology. So actually the big banks are one of the biggest investors in technology and we can, uh, we can uh, await for big things from them as well. Fintech is becoming more mature, so uh, maturity in fintech definitely is what we see. So uh, some of the companies are getting really big. Uh, they are uh, becoming public and they are, in a sense, uh, somewhat becoming corporate, which is, of course, uh, uh, the price you have to pay when you get big. And I think that fintech, whenever I say fintech, we have to, uh, I mean in a much broader sense than just lending or just P2P investments. So fintech is everything which is related to financial services, where the technology helps to make those financial services better. Be it uh, payments, be it uh, asset management, be it your insurance, be it your uh, investments the same, uh, or be it your uh, usual uh, daily banking services. And we see a consolidation. So uh, fintechs and the banks uh, are working together. Long are gone the days when we were uh, very much against uh, the banks. So I think today we have come to the terms that uh, uh, it's not winner takes all market and the best actual solutions for customers are gonna come from uh, working together. So we definitely see partnerships. We see banks investing in fintech companies and uh, this kind of, uh, uh, a rebellion uh, uh, thinking of fintechs uh, has faded away, actually, in the, in the last few years, definitely. Banks, definitely, they evolve or, and try. So all of the big banks are either opening up the uh, online uh, digital uh, lending arms, say Goldman Sachs with uh, Marcus. It's a huge lender already today in the US. They just entered the UK. Uh, likewise, all the uh, bigs like cities, GP Morgans, I mean, all of them are not, are not like sleeping. They are investing in blockchains, they are investing in AI, they're thinking about the new product. So that that's, uh, would be uh, foolish to assume that they are kind of uh, asleep. And many of them are actually innovating in very kind of exciting uh, ways. So one example is, for instance, uh, HSBC, which just came up in Singapore with an uh, account for people with dementia, people with basically uh, uh, disorder. And uh, that's something new, so nobody had done it before. And the reason is that in Singapore, not in Singapore, in Hong Kong, sorry, uh, there's a lot of old people and a lot of them unfortunately do have a dementia. And they came up with an account which actually limits kind of uh, possibility to mismanage your finance because of your uh, kind of uh, disorder. And those things gonna happen. So what I'm trying to say, banks not gonna disappear, they're gonna still be there. They will have to adapt, they are adapting, but it's not easy. And they have plenty of people, legacy systems, decision making is very slow. Then if we move to the fintech, uh, in, in general fintech space is uh, definitely expanding. If you look at the uh, world map, so we do have today about, uh, not about actually, to be very precise, the date is from the 25th of April, uh, we have 41 uh, unicorns. So the companies which are privately uh, valued at uh, more than a billion uh, US dollars. Most of them are from the US, but we definitely see uh, also some from the Europe, and uh, we always forget, I guess, about the Asia. So there's plenty of things happening in Asia, and uh, Asia, if anything, is leapfrog leapfrogging uh, both uh, Europe and, uh, and the US in terms of providing new, better uh, customer experience. So we don't have to look that far. If you have ever used WeChat, it's just amazing. Uh, or, or maybe they are just growing. Uh, because basically what we see, those private companies are not actually that keen on becoming public. Uh, only three companies uh, in the last uh, 
uh, year, I guess, uh, be, uh, uh, did IPO. So they did the initial public offering. And the thing is that uh, why so is because the companies are really focusing on the growth and on the product. So they want to build the best product and best user experience, and they want to grow. And today, actually, the private markets are that good that they can raise money and big amount of money in private markets. Uh, think of, say, the same SoftBank, or uh, SoftBank just invested, for instance, in Wirecard in the Germany, like a billion uh, US dollar, billion euro, I guess. Uh, so they're definitely private market for those investments which help them to remain private and they don't have to go public. Uh, so actually we've seen actually a very low number uh, of uh, financial technology companies going public and that was uh, actually those who went public actually are not uh, in public markets doing that good these days. Uh, as I mentioned, yeah, so there's been a lot of investment and that keeps uh, the uh, fintechs actually private and it's been uh, growing quite nicely uh, over the years. So we, we can expect, to get, if anything, the growth of uh, investments in uh, fintech space just to accelerate. And there are no limits to growth. Um, I think what uh, has been happening and what we see today is that uh, most of the fintech players, they started with one product. They started with one product. We want to do this thing very good. Uh, we're going to focus on our client segment. We're going to provide the best user experience. And they were sort of what you could call mono-aligned businesses, right? So be it uh, Revolut, which started, which started with, with just a digital wallet, be it Wealthfront in the US, which started as a uh, robo-advisor, or uh, Robinhood, which started with a share brokerage uh, kind of offering. And now they're actually heading to the next pillar or to the next kind of... Uh, uh, products which they offer, and they're becoming like multi-threaded. So what they see that they have built up the consumer uh, base, and they can actually offer much more value to them. So and that's why we see all of them actually expanding to different verticals and uh, adding additional services to what they do. Be it the same Revolut, which now became basically full-fledged digital bank. Be it Wealthfront, which uh, from investments ended up actually in lending, so they do margin loan lending, so basically you can use your portfolio in Wealthfront and get a loan uh, with a very, very low uh, interest rate, and you just your, use your portfolio as a uh, collateral, and uh, you, you get a, a great loan from Wealthfront. So all of them are actually, as a fintechs are growing up, they definitely see the customer base is already maturing, uh, meaning that they become fairly big, and uh, that's why they can use... Uh, uh, those customer bases to offer more products. So that's what's happening in fintech. And in fintech, we're definitely going to see big companies uh, uh, coming up. And uh, some of them perhaps going to service us uh, with very many different products. And we will basically not need a bank at all with m many of them uh, because they're going to serve to uh, the client niche uh, of theirs. And uh, basically, we, we're going to have all our all uh, needs served. So that's number two, fintechs. So first was the banks, not going to go away. Uh, they will have to change. Fintechs doing their best to actually provide the great user experience and expanding in product. And then finally, it's uh, the big tech companies, which is very big force, which we maybe sometimes forget. So if you look at the Amazon, it's, they have been super active in uh, financial services already. So they have actually done most of the uh, offering themselves. It's hard to comprehend that uh, uh, Amazon will become like a full-fledged bank. I really doubt so. But they're definitely going to do their best to actually build financial services around their ecosystem so that the people and players stay in their ecosystem and they don't have to use any other service. So if you look at the Amazon, it's everything from... Uh, your Amazon Pay to your uh, Amazon Lending. Who knew that Amazon Lending going to be the biggest SME lender actually today? So they are lending billions and billions of uh, US dollars every month. And they are not stopping. So Amazon is obviously forced to be uh, taken kind of uh, uh, in note. Uh, and uh, they've been doing many, many things. And I think they're going to concur, concur even more. Uh, so. Like, who knew when they started that they're going to be launching uh, in the space and competing with uh, uh, 
Elon Musk and, and the other guys, or who knew that they're going to be in AWS and do uh, those things. So we definitely are uh, should look after them when it comes also to the financial services. So we can expect uh, big things from Amazon. But uh, this is just an example. Uh, the same is going on in Google. So believe me, they are not sleeping as well. They know it's a big market. If you look at the Facebook, they just launched the... Uh, new team building in the London, so and they just announced that in 2020 they're gonna uh, uh, try to launch uh, Global Coin, which is based on the blockchain. So basically, imagine what it means for the us here or everyone in the actually using uh, the two billion plus people using the Facebook if they get the uh, a, a new currency which they can exchange. So I think in 10 years time it's gonna be massively different than we see today. Um, and that's on the macro space. So basically, a lot of things happening in financial services. Banks not uh, still going to be there. We will need them. Fintechs doing a great job on uh, uh, user experience. And then the tech companies uh, using their big networks and big distribution and uh, definitely working on the financial products. Uh, so what's happening in P2P space, which if we narrow down a bit more on uh, what we are here for today. In P2P space, basically what we see is a quite sizable market already today. So uh, the, the latest data which we have is about like 25, 30 billion uh, euro industry, uh, but it's expected to grow massively and it's continue growing. Uh, by the two, 2024, it's expected to reach almost a trillion uh, US dollars, but that's of course across the whole globe. So. Uh, uh, the market is definitely maturing, and uh, that's what we also see uh, here in Europe. Uh, well, but well, as a Mintos, we work globally, so we see it um, basically everywhere. So the same in Southeast Asia. We were there like two years ago. Nothing was, ha was happening. We went. Uh, we are now uh, much more active in Indonesia, and suddenly we have like 120 alternative lending companies in Indonesia alone. It's a massive market. But obviously in the P2P, there's also a black hole. Uh, the things which we have to acknowledge, some of the players are uh, collapsing, unfortunately. Uh, some of them bigger, some of them smaller. So the recent case was of the Lendy. Although it was not like a big news, it was brewing already for a few years. And definitely the, those things happen and uh, we have to be kind of cautious of them. And uh, uh, kind of learn from those things. I think what we have, what we, uh, can learn from the things is that uh, in P2P investments, it's really many things which matter. But uh, I would say that most of all, it uh, comes down to about the trust and transparency, being transparent and basically building trust with investors. Uh, it's also about the compliance. So uh, all the compliance with the current regulations, with upcoming regulations, having a proper legal framework in place, providing perfect service, and just uh, being open to feedback. So we, we get a lot of feedback from investors, and obviously we build the product for investors, so uh, feedback is invaluable. And if anything, the most important is really people. It's all about the people who are on the team, and that's why, for instance, at the Mintos, it's always been since day one, we uh, have adopted the framework of people, product, profit, great people, going to build a great, great product, which is going to uh, only then bring great profits. And I believe that it all comes down to the people. And obviously, as an investor, and also the borrowers, we should uh, uh, do our due diligence on, uh, on any platform. Again, when we narrow even uh, more down and we come uh, to the Baltics, so many people are actually, I mean, we are operating in 30 different countries from the lending perspective, from the kind of loan supply side. Whenever we go to some other countries, people say, well, why so many people, uh, why so many fintechs from the Baltics? Um, and that's uh, one more common misconception, which we see is that uh, the Baltic plat platforms and including us, uh, perhaps Mintos, we are kind of uh, uh, put that we work in the Baltics and so forth. But actually, Baltics is a very tiny part of our business. So from investor side, say Latvia is only 5% of our investors. The Baltics is only 15% of, uh, of our investor base. So most of it is basically we sit here in the Baltics. It's a great place to be at, but the mo most of the business is outside of the, of the Baltics. Uh, it was one of the largest, uh, because we are so much exporting, so it was one of the largest markets in the continental Europe. Uh, it's growing very much, uh, and uh, Latvia obviously uh, has been, 
also to some extent because uh, we launched and have had great traction has seen a tremendous growth rate. Uh, why so? It's because uh, we very much uh, focus on uh, what has made the Baltics a big, is that compared to other countries, actually, in the Baltics, uh, if this is our kind of, in the Baltics, uh, the cost uh, base, in the Baltics, people actually do focus a lot on IT. So if you would compare to other uh, regions, uh, IT definitely takes much lower share. So in the Baltics, it's, IT is a like, very big part of uh, total costs. And that means that we build a great product. And I think that's uh, one of the reasons why the Baltics has uh, been that big, is that we actually do invest quite a lot in technology. We do have a good talent available here for reasonable money, which means, again, that if we invest a lot, and we get actually relatively even more people and uh, relatively kind of good quality, then uh, we can build a very uh, great product. Uh, yeah, well, this is about ID expenses. And uh, from day one, we think about internationalization, so being global. Uh, the same with Mintos. From day one, it was never a question, do we want to build a platform for Latvia, for the Baltics? It always was either we build it global or we're not going to build it at all. So from day one, it was like everything was in English, uh, German, Russian, Latvian, like multi-language. Uh, it was about thinking where we can uh, sort of Instead of thinking about the countries where we can go to, it was it's about like regions or more like continents where we can go to, and so forth. So basically, that also brings us to the fact that there's a lot of uh, international customers using uh, our marketplace. So as I mentioned, like for the same interest, so about 85% of our investor base is outside of the Bal Baltics, and uh, obviously the markets have uh, grown a bit. So. Uh, if you talk about Mintos, so we have contributed our share as well. So if you look at Latvia, all those numbers when we launched, which is 2015, and definitely it has grown significantly until 2017. But actually, it will be interesting to see 2018 because it's been it will be a massive, massive increase in in the numbers there. So about Mintos, uh, most of you perhaps know about us a bit. So basically, we are. Uh, Global player, uh, the largest in the in the Europe actually today. So far, we have facilitated close to two two point five billion euros of loans. Uh, today, we have about one hundred fifty thousand investors coming from seventy plus different countries, and you can invest on Mintos uh, in loans from uh, thirty different countries. So we uh, give you unparalleled uh, opportunity to diversify. So you can build like super diversified portfolio. Start very small and uh, earn great returns uh, while minimizing the risk because of diversification. So if anything, uh, when people ask about wh what you do on Mintos, what I say is just diversify, diversify, diversify. Nothing beats diversification when it comes to investment. And also the same comes in general about investment. So in general, uh, perhaps when people invest, they should also diversify across different asset classes and not only invest in P2P investment. That's about like uh, current situation, but perhaps the most interesting is uh, about the future. What uh, holds us for the for us in the future? Uh, based on what we have learned so far, uh, obviously, what we uh, uh, are kind of uh, uh, our reference point is definitely what's happening in fintech space in general. So what we are doing now as a minter, so we are also uh, going from this uh, kind of. Uh, uh, first product, first beachfront, and now uh, expanding other pro uh, into other products and offering more value to our uh, clients, our investors. And that also holds us for the future. So uh, some of the working progress which we have is we are working on uh, uh, providing uh, investors uh, IBAN account or providing a bank account number. That's basically going to be your uh, usual, regular bank account number. So instead of transferring money from, from your bank to Mintos and then transferring back to your bank and then try, uh, uh, getting access to it, you will have access to your money uh, on Mintos account and have, uh, will be able to use it as any regular bank account number. Uh, then we are also working on the... Uh, on top of that, we're going to add the Mintos debit card so that you can access even the money even faster. So if, if you go to your whatever grocery shop or you want to buy something on the internet, you can do it straight away from your uh, Mintos investor account or Mintos account instead of like transferring it uh, uh, to your traditional bank account. Which obviously leads to the question like, will you need your traditional bank account at all? So 
that's a good question. Most likely, it's a paradigm shift. It's going to take time. But uh, eventually, I think many of us are going to realize that we don't need any other kind of uh, traditional uh, provider of uh, financial services. This year, and this is coming already uh, uh, end of this year, most likely, maybe early next year. Let's see how, how uh, fast we can execute on that. Uh, but very, very soon, we're going to launch a mobile app, finally. It's been four years, and we managed to go without mobile app. Uh, but uh, this fall, in, uh, in uh, September, October, or maybe November, uh, we're going to launch a mobile app. Uh, this is actually first sneak peek in the app. So this is very first kind of prototype. Uh, and we are very uh, much welcome your feedback. So uh, my invitation is for you, if you want to give your feedback about and see your mobile app, actually our mobile app firsthand, just go to our booth after the presentation. And we have uh, Eva and other people from the mobile app team who would be happy to take your product and show you what is uh, the app capable of doing today. And obviously, the app we are building for you guys, for investors. So your feedback is very much appreciated. Uh, and then we come down to the new product. So what is a new product? What is Invest in Access? So we've been thinking quite a lot, so how to improve the uh, investing experience at Mintos. And obviously today, uh, we started with manual investing only. So uh, then we added the auto invest. Uh, auto invest, then we added for primary market, then we added the auto invest for the secondary market. Uh, today, if you uh, would go on the Mintos and to set up auto invest, it actually takes quite a bit of time and effort, uh, but you are rewarded with the great returns. And actually, uh, today, 85% of investors are using auto invest. Only 15% of investors uh, do manual investing, and 85% use auto invest. And that means that uh, we see that investors want to uh, actually uh, much easier investment experience, but they also do want uh, much better access to capital, much better access to the money which they have invested in, uh, in loans. And today, of course, you can sell it on secondary market, but what we have come up with is a product called Invest in Access, and we are now simplifying also uh, the way how you can access the money. How it's going to work, it's actually super easy. Uh, it's a few clicks, you get in easy, you just set up how much you want to invest in, uh, uh, invest in access. Uh, it's invest across the whole platform, across the whole loans. Uh, uh, but th there are some parameters, so it's only in the loans from the lending companies, which has been on the Mintos for at least six months. So we don't allow like new lending companies on the invest in access. And it's uh, only loans which come with a buyback guarantee. So it's only buyback guarantee loans. Uh, and that gives you like uh, the best, best diversification possible. It rebalances every day. So every day is going to be adjusted. And uh, all the money, if you want, are gonna be, uh, will be reinvested automatically. So it's super like hands-free uh, experience uh, for, for investors. But the greatest part is that you can get out easy. So you can actually cash out instantly. If you want to access your money, uh, in the loans which are current, you can cash out it immediately. Obviously, subject to market demand, uh, but in general, like uh, we expect that in 99% of cases, it's going to be instantly, and you will uh, get your money straight away. So you won't need to anymore to think about uh, secondary market, uh, selling on secondary market, discounts, and so forth. So it's all uh, super simple. One click to invest, and one click to actually withdraw money instantly. Uh, and on top of that, it's obviously the security uh, is one of the things which we focus on. So it's the best diversification you can get, uh, you can get on Mintus. It only launches a buyback guarantee. And this is a sneak peek in uh, uh, how it's going to look. Uh, the rates are the same. Uh, so basically, you get the same uh, average, weighted average rate on the Mintus platform. And you see nicely uh, across how many loans you have been invested in. Uh, and it's actually going to be ahead of others. So it's going to, when the loan is placed on the marketplace, uh, first Invest and Access is going to check uh, and invest in those loans. So it's going to be even ahead of auto invest. So first it's going to be Invest and Access, then auto invest, and then manual investing. And still, great returns, which you have uh, uh, been used to at Mintus and uh, uh, have seen so far. If you want to learn more about our new product, Invest in Access, which we are very excited about, definitely come by to our booth. So we're going to definitely uh, tell you more. Uh, we're going to launch it on uh, Monday, 
on uh, on June 10. Uh, so be with us, and that's perhaps ends my presentation today. So I'm super happy to take any questions, and I guess throw the microphone around a bit. Does anybody have any questions? Yep. Here you go. Hi, Alexander from Czech Republic. Uh, just to ask for the last future, uh, if you have already a portfolio right now, it means that uh, all the value is coming to the new portfolio. You can move it there or, or just with the new investments, you can create another portfolio like the invest in excess or how it will work? Yeah, it's a, you basically have to create a new portfolio. So uh, that's how it's going to work. So it's uh, basically, um, instead of building now a new auto invest, you can just click, get uh, get uh, invest in excess, and it's going to invest across, uh, I think today's 40 something applicable uh, loan originators, or well, loans from 40 plus applicable loan originators. Hi, uh, Christian from Estonia. Uh, I've been investing on P2P platforms from 2011. And um, my question is related to regulations. And uh, as we speak currently across seven European markets, there are major regulations happening, uh, pushing lenders towards more near prime solutions. But uh, the transition actually hasn't been good for the lenders towards near prime. I'm speaking mainly about short term lenders. Um, so, even in Latvia, new regulation is coming, Finland, Poland, so forth. And uh, this is affecting uh, majorly uh, most of the lenders on your platform as well who are in short term credit. So, as an investor, do you plan in the future to maybe? give some more information about upcoming regulations on different markets to investors to make better decisions or how much you are following them yourself because lenders often tend to interpret uh, the regulations in their favor. Thank you. Thanks. That's a good question. Uh, about the l regulations, so obviously they are changing. That's like part of life. Uh, what we see though actually that the short term uh, lenders on our marketplace is actually uh, only 20%, so it's not majority, so it's only 20% is like short term. Uh, and they are adapting, uh, obviously it's not like uh, as easy as you say, so uh, it takes time because of course when you go in installment it's a whole different product, it's much longer term, it's much more uh, kind of uh, bigger amounts, so you need a different approach to your funding sources, so you need also a, uh, a bit different way of assessing the borrower, so there are many things which actually are fairly different from the short term lenders. What we see though actually that uh, uh, this is happening uh, I mean, it's then that the short-term lenders, or in general, the lending going to be more kind of bank-like lending anyway. So the short-term lending is prohibited, or at least there are some ceilings put on it. Uh, be it if you take the same example of Georgia, so basically now it's non-existent, uh, or the same, uh, I don't know, uh, the UK also is a good example of that. But the alternative lending space is much, much broader than that, so it's not only short-term uh, lending. So maybe this is an impression which we have here in the Baltics because we have only mainly short-term lenders, but we work across 30 different countries. So. Uh, uh, when we talk about alternative lending, it's anything from small business loans to car loans to invoice financing to uh, installment-based loans to your credit card loan. I mean, it's a plethora of different kind of uh, alternative lending uh, uh, solutions, right? And uh, your question about regulation, so we hear it firsthand usually because, I mean, we have a lot of uh, uh, relationships. So today, actually, just for the meet and greet day yesterday, we counted how many relationships we have with the lending company. In total, we have actually uh, around 1,000 relationships with 1,000 uh, lending companies across the globe. So in each of the market, we actually know most of the players, and of course, they uh, talk a lot, and if anything, the rumors are the first, what, uh, we are the first to hear any rumors what are the mar on the market. Can we update on those regulation changes? Uh, yes and no, of course we can update on kind of rumors, but uh, the regulation is only when it's really in effect, then it's really in effect. And we've seen it across so many different countries that what's been rumored before is not actually what uh, is adopted afterwards. Thank you.
Hello, thank you for your speech. I have a question about uh, your new product. Uh, mainly I'm interested in uh, instant uh, withdrawal, uh, how it works. I mean, uh, when I, uh, the system uh, buys a loan for me, uh, yes, and uh, I um, decide to withdraw it. Uh, so uh, who, uh, who buy the loan from me? It's uh, the other investors who are coming into the product, so we are on your behalf actually selling it to other investors who are coming into the product. And then we as Mintos are also uh, operating as kind of a market maker and we could actually help uh, with the liquidity as well. So, but in general, like it's uh, to other investors who are coming into the product. It's the same as you sell to secondary market. We are just automated it and uh, made it much easier for you. Okay, thank you. Nice one. Good catch. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hans from Germany. And thank you for your talk. It was very interesting. And you showed your, uh, that you will uh, uh, implement an application for iOS or Google. And um, I'm interested, as yesterday, in the API. Um, Will this be an open API for programmers or will it be closed and only usable with the application? Uh, initially, it will be more or less closed, so we're going to keep it to ourselves, but then we see ourselves opening up perhaps to other kind of, user, uh, other kind of uh, uh, solutions as well, which then could uh, build on top of uh, what we do, but uh, for the time being, it definitely would be uh, closed. Okay, thanks. This working? Yep. So you had a really cool slide on overall expenditure in Mintos. Um, would you like to detail a bit on the security slash cyber security expenditure? What is Mintos actually doing in that area? Yeah, cyber security is a very big thing actually across I think, technology in, in general. Uh, I think in general technology companies tend to underinvest in uh, cyber security. Uh, so what we do specifically is, uh, I think first and foremost it is uh, deep down in your culture. Actually that's um, the best you can have. You can invest as, as much as you want, but actually it's about the culture and uh, being kind of diligent about the security. And we have, in, uh, we have it in, the, in our culture from day one, so our, the same, I don't know, uh, Chief, the chief technology officer, if anything, he's the most paranoid guy I know about security. So, uh, like, super paranoid. Uh, and then uh, he even doesn't allow me to connect to public Wi-Fi, so I have to go through my kind of uh, VPNs. Uh, then uh, what we do is uh, just uh, invest in the team. So it's basically the same engineering team. Of course, it's also part of like cybersecurity. And then uh, if we talk about security in general, of course, it's also part of it is about legal stuff as well. So we just invest in teams. So I, I would say it's two things. It's first like culture itself and then investing in team. And then, of course, on top of that, you add uh, your solutions. So some of you might maybe seen that there are uh, some timeouts when you try to log in too many times, and that's like a typical solution which you use uh, against kind of uh, uh, too uh, aggressive kind of attacks on your uh, website. So, culture, well, I think I lost culture, uh, people, and then some tools on top of that. Sounds good, thanks. Hello, uh, my name is Carlos from Portugal. Um, can you comment a little bit about what will be the future of the peer-to-peer -peer platforms uh, from a business perspective? We are seeing um, a growing number of platforms and I would expect that in the future there will be some consolidation. Um, do you see, for example, traditional banks uh, approaching these type of platforms to integrate them into their service platforms? Uh, what is your input on, on this area? Uh, I think then the question is really how you define a P2P platform and I'm going to use kind of my definition and uh, of a P2P platform I would say that's a, if you can say so these days, like a typical true P2P platform which uh, both sort the borrowers and sort the lenders. Uh, if you ask me, I'm not a big fan of those because I think uh, loan origination and working with investors are two very separate businesses and it's very hard to do uh, both of them uh, very good. So I, I'm not too big fan of those uh, platforms in general. 
Uh, and for them, most likely, the consolidation doesn't make also much sense because there's a little kind of uh, synergies they can have when uh, merging with other players. Uh, but where, where we work at is a broader space. I would even say it's kind of maybe today we can define it as alternative lending space. So everything which is uh, related to lending outside of the banks. Uh, but in the future, it could be also uh, working with the banks because also today we have been talking with a few banks who would want to offload their loan books through the Mintos marketplace and sell to investors to manage their capital ratios and to actually uh, get us access to funding. Uh, so if we talk about alternative lending space, definitely we might see some consolidation, uh, bigger players uh, acquiring smaller players, and that happens like every now and then. Uh, but again, there's not that much synergy actually there, so uh, many of them are still focusing on specific verticals and uh, I would say in this alternative lending space, uh, uh, the, the deals which are going to be going to be more kind of low profile and they have happened before, so uh, bigger players uh, acquiring some player in the local market. Uh, just to be in that market instead of uh, opening up themselves, uh, but on kind of international level, I doubt. It's similar to kind of the banks in general. So banks also these days, we don't see that often that uh, they are merging. Sometimes they try, but well, Deutsche Bank and Commerce Bank tried for what, like half a year, didn't work out. So uh, uh, let's see. So there's definitely room for consultation, but I, I don't expect to have that to consult. I think one last question. Eh? Hi, my name is Oliver from Germany. Uh, you mentioned today that you try to launch a debit card soon. So could you please let us know more about your strategic plan? So are you planning to develop more in terms of a pure retail bank, a primary bank? Because N26 and Revolut are al already very strong. Is there a plan behind that? Our plan is really to cater to our uh, uh, client segment and those are the people who want to save and invest. And I would argue that's a different client segment to the banks you mentioned too. So we're going to cater to those and we see this is just a natural kind of uh, extension of what we do to make our product easier and kind of valuable to our customers. And the card is actually super simple way for you to access the money, which is now sitting on the Mintos account. Like today, you have to go on Mintos, you have to transfer the bank account, you have to kind of have a, a card attached to this bank account, and then you only can use it in your grocery. Why do you need that? So basically, you just have Mintos card, and you just use it wherever you want to use it. And uh, with Invest in Access, you can get the instant access to all the money which you have invested. So all the money is all the time working. And that's basically what our uh, strategy is more to cater to our investor base instead of uh, going like super broad uh, retail based uh, market. Anyway, that's it from my side. It was uh, fantastic having you here. We did our best to bring a great weather. So if you come to Riga, it's actually all year long like this. So it's a uh, fantastic weather every day here. Uh, it's uh, great to see you face to face. Uh, we are definitely here. Uh, I'm going to be here for quite a while, so if you go to the, our booth, we are happy to uh, hear your feedback about our mobile app and also tell you more about Investment Access. Other than that, enjoy the conference and uh, have fun. Thank you so much, Martins. Thank you. I certainly learned a lot, and we shall continue to both learn and grow our brains. But now, people, we shall enjoy some lunch. Please. We'll see you back here in about 40 minutes, okay? Enjoy.